God. But there was another way that he was different from everybody else, and that was that all of the other Tanaim, either they worked in the revealed Torah, or they worked in the hidden Torah. One or the other. Either they worked in the revealed Torah, which is like the Talmud, or they worked in the concealed Torah, which is Kabbalah. Uh, yeah, Midrashim is like in the middle, but right, they usually, do, usually they either the revealed Torah is also Midrashim. Uh -huh. So, there's four, there, you, the Torah can be divided into four different classifications, what's called <coughs> Pardes, Pshat, Remez, Drush, and Sol. So, Pardes, the word Pardes means like a, a orchard. Orchard, but it's just it's an abbreviation. Pei, Reish, Dalit, Samach, Pardes. Pardes is the Pshat, simple meaning. Remes is, is what it hints at. Drush is what you can learn out of it. In English, there's a word called homely edicts or something. Home, homely edicts. I never heard anybody even say the word. I've never, I've seen, I've seen, I've seen, huh? it's not, but it's that's how it's no, no, no. it. Homely yeah. uh, You heard it now. Don't listen to the, to the video. You heard it again. Homely edicts. What does it mean? Anyway, that's like that's like midrash. That's like the midrash. That there's you know something happened in the Bible, and then the midrash comes and makes a whole book out of it. One little sentence. And um, then there's so so are the secrets of the Torah. So are the secrets of the Torah. That's like Kabbalah. And it says that a person has to know all these aspects of the Torah. It's an obligation for a person to know all the Torah if he can. But for sure you can have some knowledge of the secrets of the Torah. Every person has to know. Especially rabbis. If a <coughs> rabbi doesn't know the secrets of the Torah, then his decisions, his legal decisions, are uh, void. They're, no, they're nullified. He doesn't know the secrets of the Torah. But right, the Arizal, right. And also the Vilna Gaon, the other, these, these the great... Vilna Gaon, you What? Vilna Gaon, you have to know the secrets of the Torah. Yeah, sure, sure, he was one of the big... He, he wrote more in the secrets of the Torah than he wrote in the Vilna Torah, the Vilna Gaon. He wrote more in the secrets of the Torah. And he said, I mean, it doesn't mean that everything you say is going to be right. You understand? I mean, you can know the secrets of the Torah, and it could be that the other people that are greater than you in this one area disagree with you. One of the big examples is in the tour. There's, there's one book of, of law called the tour, and there are two main commentaries. One is called the Beit Yosef, Rabbi Yosef Cairo, and the other one is called the Bais Hadash, the Bach. It was Rabbi Yo, Yol Sirkis. Sirkis. And the law is never like the Bach. The law, the way the explanation is, is never like the Bach. But he's there. He's in it. What does he mean? He was wrong. He wasn't wrong. He wasn't wrong. And he was an expert genius in Kabbalah. In Kabbalah. Nevertheless, the law doesn't go like him. Rabbi Yosef Cairo had a special, special uh, grace from heaven. That the law always goes like him, his explanations. But the Bach was still a tremendously holy person. So both together with Balaturim? No, the ba no, the Balaturim is the one who wrote, writes the. Wait, no, the 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 Baal Haturim is a is a that's different. That's different. No, no, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, you're I'm sorry. Right. The Baal Haturim was called what was Yaakov? Ya what was it? Like Yaakov Baal Haturim. He was the grand. He, he was the son of the Rosh of Rabbi Rosh <coughs> that wrote the the, the Bishon, that wrote the commentary on the on the Torah. Adoni Abi Harosh. He was the son of it. That was the called the Yaakov Balatori. <coughs> Alright, these people lived, they lived like what, 500 years ago? 500 years ago. 600 years ago. Really? Balatori was only 500 years ago? Yeah. Times of Russia? 600 years ago. Yeah. Wrong. Well, maybe after the. After, after Russia, for sure. After Russia. Okay. So, all these people, but everybody had to learn, they had to know the secrets of the Torah, but not everybody had the ability to, to be the author of books that 
um, explain the secrets of the Torah. Explain the secrets of the Torah. Like there's a lot of people who, you know, how they'll play piano or play tennis or whatever, but how many greats are there? You know, very few. The same thing is, is learning the secrets of the Torah. Every Jew has to learn the secrets of the Torah. Incidentally, all the people who came out against the Rebbe, about your Rebbe, didn't know the secrets of the Torah. They never learned it. They, they encouraged other people not to learn it. There, there were people who disagreed with certain things that the Rebbe said. Right? Certain things they disagreed with what the Rebbe said. I mean, well, they, you know, we don't agree with them, but they, they were great people. Some people disagreed with them. The ones who disagreed with the Rebbe himself, they were people who had no idea what the secrets of the Torah were. No, they never learned it. They, they told other people not to learn it. Okay. Was there a whole also with the Tzimtzum? The Tzimtzum that the Litvaks, Litvaks held one on the side? That's different. It used to be that the, the, the Litvish Jews, that they learned Kabbalah also. It used to be that they learned Kabbalah. <coughs> but the, that was the previous generations that they learned Kabbalah. And they, they didn't know what Hasidic was. But then they started learning what Hasidic was, and now the only ones that were against the regular people had no idea whatsoever what the secrets of the time. Wow. Oh, Interesting. Interesting. That's how it came out. I mean, in the early generations, the, the, the Golan of Vilna was a tremendously genius person in all aspects of the Torah. In every, all the aspects. Okay. So, here we go. Let's go back to our subject. What is our subject? Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai. Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai united all of the Torah, and he was not just that he learned it all, which everyone is supposed to do, but he also was the author of ideas. Ideas came through him. He was great. In the revealed Torah, when Rabbi Shimon, whenever there's an argument between Rabbi Shimon and one more person, the law is always like Rabbi Shimon. If it's between Rabbi Shimon and several people, the law is not always like Rabbi Shimon. But if it's like Rabbi Shimon and one other person, as he was greater than any other single person. And it says, there's a scene of the Rebbe, the Rebbe brings it up, that he was a pupil of Rabbi Akiva and so was Rabbi Meir. And Rabbi Akiva gave uh, smicha, he gave, how do you say, rabbinical ordination to Rabbi Meir first. And Rabbi Shimon was like, surprised, <coughs> and he turned to Rabbi Shimon and he said, Only me and God know how great you really are. Wow. Rabbi Shimon, right? So like, there's something totally different from any human being that there was ever in the history of the world. I mean, you have the, the Rebbe's of Chabad are, we believe, are like that, are the, are the same thing. If you look at the altar Rebbe, for instance, you look at the Rebbe, just, you know, endless source of knowledge. Not just memory, we're talking about explanations and revealing, right, uh, uh, you say, connections in the Torah, and how it connects to, to life. Incredible. But, okay, let's, now we're learning about Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai. From Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai, we learn that there can be such a thing like this. A person is totally different from everybody else. Where was there ever such a, an example like this? Can you think of another example like this in the Bible? Moshe Rabbi. Moshe. Moshe Rabbeinu was a person totally different from everybody else. No one wanted to leave Egypt. He took them, not only he left, he took them all out. He said, we can't accept the Torah. Moshe got the Torah. Right? Moshe went up the mountain. It's like going into the Holy of Holies. He's staying there for 40 days. How can you do it like that? Moshe did it. The other people couldn't even do it for one minute. So Moshe Rabbeinu was totally different, totally different from everybody else. Really, another example is also King David. That's why everybody hated King David. King David was also totally different from everybody else. It was just that King David was so active in the world, and he acted sort of like everybody else. I mean, he fought in battles, and he, you know, was with the people. And so the, the, but he also, that's why people hated him, King David. Because he was totally different from everybody else, and people couldn't accept it. Another example is Rabbi Shem Bar Yochai. Another example you'll see is the Arizal. <coughs> Arizal was also like that, but the Arizal was a person that he only dealt, uh, he was a master in the secrets of the Torah. Mm -hmm. He was a master in the secrets. The, the Arizal, Rabbi Yitzhak Luria. He was buried not far from Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai. He's buried in Sfat, Rabbi the Arizal. But he also was this incredible revelation, revealed ideas that just, and nobody disagreed with him. What's his name? What is uh, the Indian about the mikveh that is there? Uh, I don't know. Some people say it was his mikveh, some people say it wasn't his mikveh, but it's a nice mikveh. They said to say that if you go in there, a person will, if a Bathsheba go in there, he will remain Bathsheba. He will remain religious or I don't know. There's all sorts of different The one I heard was that if anyone who goes there will do chuba. Yeah, perma. Huh? Perma. Where can the 
me about doing tshuva. What? You have to do tshuva when you came late to class today. You know what? The Arizal. Uh, no. Okay. Anyway. <coughs> 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 he was on his computer. You don't know what? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so we have now a, uh, an explanation of Rabbi Yisrael. So it says, there were Jews that stood from the previous page that they learned the revealed Torah and the secrets of the Torah. There were some that did one or the other. So for instance, Rabbeinu HaKodesh, he learned his whole life, let's do it to the end of the previous page, was the revealed Torah. That's the third line from the bottom. Rav Yehuda, Rav Yehuda, Kuli all Tanai of his learning, Bin Nizikin Havit, in damages, the laws of damages. Dechelik Zeh, that portion, this, this portion, Shem Torah of the Torah. Havit was? Huh? Havit was. Dechelik Zeh, this portion, Shem Torah of the Torah. Nidlabesh was clothed, was dressed up. The Torah is all the will of God, of course. But this part of the Torah, Nidlabesh, is enclosed. Meaning it's covered. Huh? Meaning it's covered. It's put in. It's put in. The devorim and things, hachitachtonim, the lowest things. Like there's this thing, Gilgul in You ever read this Gilgul in reincarnation? According to Judaism, sometimes a person can be reincarnated into a fish. Yeah. So they're they're different they're animals. It sounds a little bit not Jewish, but the fact is, is it can be. So here you got, you know, this fish is George. How, what, what does that mean? How does it feel George? You can talk and say, hey George, see, what do you say? How do you feel there? He doesn't know, he doesn't feel it, he doesn't, right? Our results is going to tell, what does it mean? There's, this soul is inside of this animal. What, what it means, I don't know. But nevertheless, Hashem also can put Himself into the Torah. He puts a, a revealed revelation of Himself in the Torah, because Hashem is everywhere. Hashem will put a revelation, but there's different ways. The, the Torah is the <coughs> will of God. But sometimes it's enclosed in the revealed Torah. What's the revealed Torah? The revealed Torah talks about if this guy lies, if this guy cheats, <coughs> if this guy the, the, uh, the, the steals something from somebody else, this one damages something of somebody else. <coughs> Says the Rebbe, these are the lowest things for all of us in this world. Hagashmi, physical things, Gufa itself. Then the Ziki not only deals with physical things, like mitzvahs, and good deeds, and praying, and nice things, and laws of the temple, but it deals with the lowest things, the laws of criminals. In this world, Inyani matters, Nizikin of damages. Uh, Gabriel, you have a pen? Okay. Damages. Ta'anot claims. You know what ta'anot means? Claims. How do you know Shell sheker of lies. Ta'anot shell sheker, in other words, lying. The guy comes into court and says, Your Honor, I swear I did not steal that man's uh, horse. He left it by me and it got stolen. Right? When was it stolen? Three days ago. We saw you drive around it yesterday. It says, well, it came back briefly, but, uh, you know, then it got stolen again. By me. <laughs> <laughs> well, you have to have two witnesses. And, uh... Uh, no, not the case. Bechdei in order. Hashem is one of the way. Huh? Hashem is one of the way. in order. The varer. A person can lie. A person can lie if there's one, one witness. If there's no witnesses. They see him with, there he is. It's in your pocket. And he said, oh, yes, you know, I, I, I forgot. I mean, I forgot. Forgot to, to hide it. Bechdei in order, the varer to purify, to refine the <coughs> gam also. Ha nitzut sot. These sparks. What are the sparks? What are the sparks? What sparks? In the candle. What the sparks of Hashem. Huh? The sparks of the Yudah. What? Sparks of Hashem. The sparks of Hashem, right? Shem, the morning Elo, in these things, what did Hashem do? Hashem created the world, and He 
He created the world, like I said before, disorganized. The world is disorganized. And when our job is to be in the world and organize the world. To separate the bad from the good and to use the good things properly. And to not use the bad things at all. Who decides what's bad or good? Hashem decides what's bad or good. All these good things, everything that there is in the world has a spark in it. There are certain sparks, if you want to call it sparks of godliness. If you want to call it meaning, use, value. Right? Things that can be used to serve Hashem. Right? We should use them. Sometimes things can be used to serve Hashem, but we can't use them. For instance, truma. Truma is a thing that has to be eaten by the Kohen. It can be used to serve Hashem, but only by the Kohanian. We can't eat it. Right? The, the, the things that can be eaten, the meat, it's permissible to eat meat. But it has to be kosher meat. It's permissible to eat milk. But it has to be eaten an hour after meat. There are things that are permissible. You have to know how to use them. Then there's six, six, six hours after. Meat. Well, that's it. Oh, six hours after. The other way what did I say? It's a milk. It's an hour after meat. It's meat and an hour after milk. Before meat. One hour before. Milk is one hour before. Is an hour after meat. That's what I said. Yes. Yeah, that's right. You have to wait. Oh, it's it. oh milk. You can eat milk before. One one hour after meat. Yeah, it's permissible to eat one hour. Some people are machmed that they do six hours. We are. Ah. But some people say only one hour. Some that's people say all you have to do is make blue brachas and muzzah. Do you learn the laws of this? Really? But the fact is I made a mistake. But I'm just saying that. <laughs> the, the, truth is, the truth is you can eat one hour. Well, milk sorry. you can eat an hour after <laughs> Milk you can eat an hour after meat. Well, it meat changes meat. the whole, the whole world suddenly. We, but we, we don't do it. We don't do it, but there are places that do do it, and it's okay. Like, 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 why don't we do it? What's the ruling of that? It says, in the, no, it says in the Shulchan Aruch that a person should be careful to do six hours. But the, the main law <coughs> of the Yosef is that a person can eat meat and then afterwards eat meat. And who doesn't? All you have to do is eat meat. You have to do a on Muslim immediately afterwards. You have to, you have to make a blessing of, of the food afterwards. So separate. Separate. And who doesn't do it? Who waits just an hour? What? There are some people, I think, in Halab. There's some people who no, do three No, Hasidic group would do it. How, there's some of them do three hours. No, Hasidic group. All the German Jews do three hours. Three hours. But it's possible to... It's, you'll see it in the Shulchan Aruch. It's good to learn smicha. They call it so Whatever it's all doing. <laughs> okay, but you're right. They, uh, it, you can eat meat, milk, but it should be six hours after meat. Very good. Mm -hmm. So it'll be six hours. So wait, a person is being ever okay if Hashem Shalom he will come to accidentally eat yes. five hours after... Yeah. If you made a mistake, it's not such a bad, you don't have to burn your tongue or cut off your teeth or something. Knock out your teeth. Okay. But the halacha is one hour. Halacha, the call of the halacha, listen, the call of the halacha is all you have to do is be blessed between the two. Seriously? Yes, but nobody does that. The custom, custom is stronger than law. Custom is stronger than law. Yes, custom is stronger than law, and a lot of things. Custom is strong in the world because custom comes into your free will. And you can take it or leave it. If you decide you want to take it, that's even stronger. That's the real purpose of the Torah. The to real purpose of the Torah is that godliness should come into your free will. Not that you should try to do the minimum and get by the minimum so that I'll be free of God and I can do what I want. Right? The purpose is that I want to do what Hashem wants all the time. So Hashem made a lot of things that are <coughs> that are optional, so you don't have to do it if you don't want to. So a person says, I don't want to do it, it means what? That I want to be free. I want to be, as much as I can be free from God, I want to be free from God. Right? That's a way to live life. A person can live life that way. But you have the option. There's the option. And that's, the people look for, for loopholes and, and, you know, and uh, easy ways to do things. Is the Torah allows them to do such things. You can look for such loopholes. But you have to know that the more loopholes you look for, right, that the more loopholes you're going to want to look for. But the point is that... So the Pirates says, listen, one second, you, know, you have to dump three times a day. I mean, really, you know, Shachris and Mincha, the main ones, the evening prayer is optional. So, yeah, yeah, I don't want that. I don't have to do that. <laughs> and also, you don't have to do that. I can give you a whole bunch of them. Right? It ends up everybody's going to be coming to class naked tomorrow. Right? That's controversial. That's <laughs> not controversial, yeah. So, uh, yeah, I think that that's what we need. Okay. Right, but the point is it has uh, German Jews who do three hours on basis for it. So uh -huh. they yeah. have basis for it, you can't say that. Sure, of course they do, yes, of course they do. Sure. 
Listen, from the Torah, you can eat milk and meat together. Nothing wrong with eating milk and meat together. From the Torah, no problem. You just can't eat them if they were cooked together. But also from the Torah, you're not allowed to cook milk and meat together. If you cook it together, it's a sin. The same sin as eating it. Cooking milk and meat together. If you go into an Italian restaurant and he says, uh, just to light the fire uh, under the spaghetti. He said, one second, what's in the spaghetti? He said, milk and meat? Said, of course, you can't light it. Right? You can't light it. Because if you light it, you're doing a sin. Also, according to the Torah, Ten Commandments, you're not supposed to desire anything that anybody else has. So if you want to, according to the Torah, you're not supposed to desire things. Some people say even in your heart. Anything that anybody else has, you're not supposed to desire it. Can you, you want to use the Torah Jew? Go on, do it. Also, you're never supposed to want to take vengeance on somebody or have a grudge from the Torah. We learned it in last week's Parsha. Loti Kombo Loti Torah. You're not supposed to... So if you want to be just a pure Torah Jew, you're never allowed to have desire for anybody else's stuff, and you can never get mad at anybody and hold a grudge. Never. You're going against the Torah. Have a good day. Let's go. Well, uh, is that what causes Ayanara? Ayanara is jealousy. Yeah. Jealousy is not necessarily desiring something. A person could desire something. But if by desiring, but does it, can it cause the Ayanara? It could. It could. A person could desire it means why does he deserve such a thing like that? It could be you don't desire it. It could be you just don't want him to have it. Right? I don't I wouldn't I don't care if I have a big house like that, but he doesn't deserve a big house like that. That's for sure. Right? I hope his house falls down. Of course he would never say it to the person. But some people would know that also. Yeah. That's jealousy. Jealousy destroys a person. It destroys you more than it destroys him. So so the same thing with having a grudge, being angry. Does angry it does more harm to you than it does it eats your soul up. Destroys you. That's why people get drunk and they get this. They have all these grudges and all these desires and all these crazy things going on inside of themselves, and they can't take it. <coughs> so they drink it. Oh, I feel better. <laughs> Go down to the bar and punch somebody out. Who are they punching out? They're punching out themselves. They say it. <laughs> Let's go. All right. So here we go, Rabbi Shimon. We get off of that. I don't know. Rabbi Shimon, Rabbi Yochai. Was all the others learned a little bit? Uh, Kabbalah, the most of them, oh it says, yes, they, they, they were the sparks, these sparks were purified by means of learning, when they learned the Torah, these men purified these sparks, when you learn in the Torah about stealing, about cheating, about lying, about these low things, it raises up the sparks in these low terrible things. And it makes people less I say, apt to do them. Hashem wanted them to be stealing and lying in the world. He wants you to have the option. You said before, you have the option <coughs> to do it. There's people that say that. What? I'm doing what the Lord wants. If God didn't want me to steal, He wouldn't make me a thief. I'm just doing what God made me. Right? If God didn't want me to be a drug addict, then He wouldn't have given me the desire to be a drug addict. And they got a point. They have a point. A very good point. God did make them into a, into a, to give them the desire to be a drug addict. And God did give them the knack to be a thief. But He gave it to them so that they would purify it and refine it. It's a God-given gift. People have that they get depressed or they get what about, what about non-Jews? And the same non-Jews, same thing, exactly the same. Yeah. No difference. Yeah. As far as that goes, what the results and when a Jew does it, when a non-Jew does it, what's the results in the upper worlds? And the seals could be different, but you know, as far Practically speaking, mm -hmm. in, in that way, you know, physically speaking, there's no difference. An Anju has a, an obligation to purify himself. He's, God's creation is created in God's image. Mm -hmm. An Anju created in God's image. Okay, the Jew is a di different sort of thing. It's a different sort of a thing. The purpose of the Jews is to tell the non Jews that they're created in God's image. That's one of the purposes, how much God loves them. The Jewish people, meanwhile, have this, have, have this big. Difficulty and that what that they have inside of themselves, bad character traits, <laughs> just like non Jews, just like criminals, just like murderers, just like other people. People have these things and they're God given. Hashem gave us these things, Nazikin, to, to damage other people, to lie, to, to, to be a traitor. Everyone has these these desires inside of some people have this one, some people have that one, some people But to affect someone else in a bad way. Okay, just affect you? Just you yourself? Damages. 
uh, damages is affecting somebody else. But, <clears throat> so, uh, these things, about, what, why did God put it to refine it, to raise up these sparks? A person would say, yes, God, you gave me these terrible character traits. Now help me take them away. To is really the only thing that deals with everything. Everything. Everything there is, the Torah deals with everything that's gospel. Yeah, everything physical. I mean, there's also, you know, every country has its laws. Yeah, but... Every country has its laws and its statutes and its... You know, some people depend on it. The, the, the Arabs, the Muslims, they developed also their own, you know, legal system and their yeah, but whole law system. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a copy. They copied the Torah. They, they, they wanted to, you know, they wanted Islam to rule over every aspect of their life. So they looked and saw what the Torah did, and they copied it as much as they could. Uh, no, but there's, there's, uh, there's, uh, even the Sweden's laws that like, came out like five years ago that were part of Jewish law. Of course, of course. The Jews had these laws for, for, for since the Torah was given. Three thousand years ago. They realized that it's good to have a law. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. The Elu and there's these people. Next page. The Elu and these people. Sheikhar that the main asakam occupation. The Elu. Next page. You didn't get the next page. You didn't get it. This is the one here. The Elu and these people. Oh, I give it a little more to this. The Elu and these people. Sheikhara Sakam, that their main occupation. Which one is Sakam? Asakam. Occupation. Sheikhara, that the main Asakam occupation. Ah. Or just the other side. Yeah. <laughs> but that was the right one. This is the right one. You just had the wrong side. You turned it over the wrong side. <laughs> you were looking, you were looking here, right? Oh. So watch this. Huh? The Yigar that the main Asakam occupation, Haya was. The Nister the Torah and the concealed Torah. Maase Mirkava, namely what's called Maase Mirkava. How the the upper chariot, <coughs> called the upper chariot. There's this Maase Mirkava, it's called the upper chariot, or the upper, how do you say, construction. My how things are more cov. How things are put together. Maaser is upper. Ma no. Maaser means the 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 the, 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 the work. Of the, the work. Oh, the work. Merkava of the upper chariot. You want to call it that the upper chariot? What the secrets of the Torah. Maaser Merkava is called the secret of the Torah. No, Merkava also means how things are put together. Larkiv. To put things together. What is Benistar? The uh, Benistar, yeah. Benista, the concealed Torah. Maiser Merkava. In other words, the, 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 the works of the Merkava, the upper worlds, okay? Upper worlds. Lo Hayu, they were not oskim, dealing. They did not occupy themselves. Their occupation was not occupation. Benigla in revealed Torah, Kol Kach Solange. Kol Kach Solange. Kamo or like Rabbi Nachunai. Benigla in the um, in the revealed Torah, Kol Kach so much. Kamo or like uh, Rabbi Nachunai. What? Ben Hakana. There was a rabbi called Rabbi Nachunai Ben Hakana. You ever heard of this rabbi? No, you never heard of him because he wasn't in the Gemara. Shechiber, that he <coughs> authored, he compiled, he made. <coughs> Sefer Hakana. It's a Kabbalistic book called Sefer Hakana. <coughs> Sefer Hakana. Hari Behold. There's a, there's a lot of these Kabbalistic books, very interesting. Sefer Abahir, that there's a. Or Hakanus. There's all these different. Books of Kabbalah, also by the Ramak, there's books by Moshe, Moshe Karavero. But those are later, the, that's a different story. These are, these are later people, but there were people that, in the time of the, of the, of the, uh, the, the, uh, the 
Tanaim that they made these books. <coughs> the Tanaim, 1,800 years ago. Huh? We have the books here, Sefer Rakata is one of them. Sheikh Hebrew, that he may say, Rakata. A Kabbalistic book, Harry, the old, the Nigla, the Torah, the revealed Torah. <coughs> Muva is brought, me mano from him. Rock me'at, only a little. A little. Masha Ain Kane, which is not the case. Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai, Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai. He may behold. No sefals in addition to this. Shasako that his occupation that he occupied. Shasako that his occupation the penim is a Torah in the inside of the Torah, the secrets of the Torah. It was beside the fact that the way that he learned the inside of the Torah <coughs> was but often in a way. Naale higher. Harabe much yoter more. Not only that, him shech he drew down. I mean, have as a as a. Him shech he drew down. Or the light, <coughs> the penimius of the inside of the Torah. Gam also benigla in the revealed Torah. And as you see, what Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai said, all these things. Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai had so many. There's hundreds of laws that Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai said in the in the Mishnah and the Gemara. Hundreds of laws, yes. In the name of Rabbi Shimon in the Gemara, <coughs> all over the place. That's in the Gemara. You'd think, but maybe, maybe this is a different Rabbi Shimon. Rabbi Shimon. No, it's the same Rabbi Shimon as Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai, that he was the author of the Zohar. And it was, he was the king of the secrets of the Torah, and he brought the secrets of the Torah into the revealed Torah. What does it mean, the secrets of the Torah? Godliness, to feel Hashem. You see what a mysterious thing is, is, that God is. Here you have all these non-Jews in the world, they all have their religions. Religions, very spiritual, wonderful, deep people that are, that are uh, into these religions, they have these deep secrets and there's mystical stuff. I once used to read books about the, this mystical, the mystical, you know, the Gospels and the mystical aspect of it. There's all these groups and things like that that they have, all these mystical, and they take ideas from Kabbalah also, right? And the, and the, the uh, Muslims also have their, their mystical the, you know, aspects of it, the Sufis and these people. And not to talk about all the others, you know, the, the Hindus and these people that have the meditations, and they go up and they, they, uh, and they uh, evoke all these powers, and they can do all these amazing things, and, you know, they sit in without eating for years. And so, uh, they, so I don't know what the power of accomplishment, I guess they save money. Or something. But they, whatever they do, they, they have these tremendous powers, and, this, and we learn in the Torah that Paro had the power over the nature, controlled nature, Bilam. Either they, but still, all of them, interestingly enough, they, ne they don't exactly get what God is. What does it mean they don't get what God is? They understand that God is very high, but they can't really get the idea that God personally gave a Torah that has all these ridiculous laws in it about, you know, what happens if you steal somebody's cow or something like that. What does God do with stuff like that? And He gave it to everybody. He gave it to all the Jewish people. Even the most simple people and the most... Right, the most, uh, you say, ignorant people, they didn't have to be especially spiritual or gifted. Right? By them, you know, if God speaks, He only speaks to the master or to the, you know, the leader or the holy one or something like that. And God talked to everybody. He spoke to everybody. And He said the most <coughs> mundane things possible. Right? Mundane things possible. Why would, why, why would they have a God like this? They can't conceive that there could be such a God like this. And it's just out of their... Right. They can't, out of their... Right? What aspect of God will come down? I mean, if, if, if God really said these low mundane things, so maybe it's not so great. The God of the Jews is not, so, not such a big deal. You know, once in a while he does miracles, takes them out of Egypt and stuff like that. You know, but uh, the main thing is you have to have a guy, you know, he raises the dead. You know, so we have that also, but we, didn't, we don't make a big deal out of it. Right? Yes. Although tonight, they're going to raise the dead. We don't make a big God. Uh, 
it's also it, it's hard to it's hard to do hard to do what all the commandments for them if they want to do spirituality so they just want to do spirituality they don't want to have to do they don't want to wake up they don't want to do all the things that they do listen there's some of them I mean, yeah you could say that <clears throat> maybe for the simple but there's some of them that you know that let's say these priests these people yeah. at least they're supposed to that they 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 devote their whole lives to God, so they don't get married and they fast and they do this and they do that, and they're just thinking about going to heaven all the time, and they, so, so their whole life is occupied with all these you know spirits. So these people are occupied with this stuff. Not close to it. You know, good. good. Yeah, by Jews, maybe the simple people are also supposed to be occupied. Yeah. But still, you know, you, you think, why do you have to do all these things? You know, look, look, see what God told you to do, and do the things that God said. No, they have to make up their own thing. But they have to, like, God said, you shouldn't get married. Who said, why you shouldn't get married? Exactly the opposite. A non-Jew is supposed to get married. It's supposed to get married. It's supposed to have children. It's supposed to fill the world. It's supposed to work and have this, give charity. Right? Not, and not have any money. So who said to do that? You want to do it. So you say, I want to be close to the Lord. I want to go. Okay, but you made that up. That's not thing. So here we have, we're talking about Rabbi Shema Bar Yechai, but not only just the, not the non-Jews, also the Jews also. It's hard impossible us, for us to get as excited about an idea in the Torah as it is for us to get excited about money. The person gets his money, he gets excited. Right? You have an idea in the Torah? Nice idea. I'm not talking about other people, I'm talking about me. Right? You get a little money, you have to pay the teachers. Where's the money going? All of a sudden, oh, money, that's a big deal. Right? Somebody comes with a new idea in the Torah, I'm very interested, I'm very nice, but not as, as interested as somebody gives me a million dollars. Right? Oh, oh. Make sure this Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai made it that the Torah was as godly, valuable, interesting, alive, the revealed Torah, that was more interesting than money than anything else. Money is also good. Nothing wrong with money. That's what we learn in the Torah, to know what to do with money. <laughs> if you don't have any money, you don't know what, right? you don't need really these laws. You have to know what you do with, with the world. But the fact is, what do you get excited about? What excites you? The Torah, get the godliness of the Torah. Not just the ideas of the Torah, or I'm going to go to heaven for the Torah. Right? Torah is wonderful. There's also big, there's people, professors, that they're as excited about, you know, mathematics or but a new idea, right? Uh, somebody in Chinese, uh, Chinese antiquity, did you know they found a new Ming vase, a whole new, oh, ho, oh, oh, ho, he's excited, right? Because it's an idea. There's people who like ideas. They love ideas. <coughs> so they get excited about ideas. We're, talking, we're not talking about ideas. We're talking about the godliness of the Torah. The godness of the Torah. Just to learn something, even if you don't understand it, but you're excited about learning. Oh, learning the Torah is wonderful. That Rabbi Shimon made people see and feel the godliness in the Torah. That was his thing. That's called the secrets of the Torah. Penim is the Torah. So the inside of the Torah, learned the Torah, he drew down the inside of the Torah until the revealed Torah. That even when you learned about these mundane things about damages, you also felt godliness. Kiyadu, as it's known, Be'inyan, in the topic, quote, Machatsti v'ani erpoa. Machatsti v'ani erpoa. God said, it's, it's a pasuk in the Hazino. It's a, uh, a poem right near the end of the Torah. What is Machatsti? I'll explain it. Machatsti means I made sick v'ani erpoa, and I will heal. It's a pasuk in the Torah. I I killed I I made everybody die. I'll make everybody come back to life. On this we know there's going to be the raising of the dead. I made people sick and I made them healthy. According to this, they learned that people will rise up from the dead sick. They'll rise up from the dead with the sickness that killed them, and then God will heal them. Interesting. That's what it says. The Rebbe brings it down. Machatzti, I made sick and I will heal. But what's this word for being sick? Machatsti. Machatsti is the same letter as, as a mechitza. You know what a mechitza is? Mechitza, separation. It says, Machatsti vanir That I made a separation and I will heal it. So, who does it? Al Yadeh by means of Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai. Nisrape was healed. You should write these words down. You won't remember it. Machatz in the that means of Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai, Nisrapeh was healed. Unisbatla and negated. 
המחיצה, the division, שבין, between, גויה, revealed, תורם, לסרטים, to the concealment, לדורס of the Torah. Until healed, healed, is healed. The division, and the concealed Torah. until the revealed, and the concealed. they are. Chad one. The Alpi is a gimel. The Alpi is a, and according to this, <coughs> Yuvan will be understood. Shailui that the, how do you say the betterness, the the, the excellence, the advantage, the advantage. Eh? The Rebbe Shimon right. But Yuvan means the the betterness, the, the advantage, the highness. The Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai, Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai, Al Ab, call all, Hatanayim, and all of the other Tanayim, who is Ilui, an advantage, a betterness, Shabbat Aroch, that is incomparable. In other words, Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai, not only was he infinitely better than everybody else in the secrets of the Torah, but he even brought the secrets of the Torah into the revealed Torah. What is Aruch Hu and Ani? What? What is Aruch? It's not Aruch Hu and Ani. And without Aruch comparison. Comparison? Yes. And with Aleph is... Uh, to be arranged. Shalom, and therefore... <coughs> Bichdei in order, the orer to arouse. Hashefa, hey, how do you say, um, Hashefa, a flow. The she, word Shefa means a flow. I thought it was Hashefa. Hash, uh, same thing, Hashefa, Hashefa, Hashefa comes from the same word. In order to arouse, Hashefa, a flow, or teachings, or a Blessing. blessings. Or te- in our case, it's teachings. The, pu- the pupils wanted to learn, so they praised them, and he would teach them. A chef, uh, some sort of a, an influence, me mental from him. Hutzrechu, they needed the shivcho to praise him. The pupils praised him in order to elicit from him his wisdom, his teachings, his godliness. He, they, because why Rabbi Shemar Bar Yechai was the level of Yechida, that's what we said, the highest level of the soul. He, they, behold, Ha'iloi, the betterness, the highness, in this case, the highness, the Yechida, of Yechida, Al-An, Nefesh, Ruach, Neshama, Chaya, the rest five, of the soul, the rest of the soul, who is Iloi, a highness, Sheba'en Aroch, which is incomparable. Don't think this means like, you know, the five levels of the soul are like, let's say, in, the, in, in the education. So you have elementary school, and then you have high school, and then you have college, then you have a master's degree, and then you have your PhD, and PhD is, is higher than all the others, and that's something like Yechida, right? So it's, not, it's not like that. It's not like that. It's, like, it's sort of like the difference between a plant and a mineral, a plant and a mineral, and an animal, and a human, and God. (laughs) These are different levels of creation. Yechida is the creator, that's Hashem. But you can't, there's no comparison between the creator and the creation. So that's like Yechida. Yechida is part of the creator himself. That's inside the Jew. Right? There's the four le- lower levels, Nefesh, Rukh, Mashem, Achaya, and Yechida is something completely different. Let's look and see. Uh, uh, a mineral would be higher than a plant. And the mineral is higher than a plant. A mineral can grow. A mineral can grow. A mineral even responds. Plants look outside, you see flowers, they face the sun. Ever see that? 
flowers they face the sun, when the sun goes to the sky, the flowers face. The Kamuvan, as understood, come also means there from this. Shenikret, that it's called, this part of the soul, Nikret, is called Yechida. <coughs> What's Yechida mean? Now the Rebbe is going to explain. Lushen, the expression of Yechid, unique. Yechid means unique. Write that down. Yechid means unique. Because the Yechid means a lot of other things also. But in this case it means unique. The tour that the this, that the I say the title, the title, quote, Yechid, end quote. This word Yechid, put a quotation marks. Mora indicates She'en, that there is not Shainilo, there is not a number two to it. It is unique, there's nothing else like it. So don't think that maybe the other four levels of the soul are something like Yechida, but Yechida is higher. No, it's totally different. Shagam, the Hagam, that even though. The Hagam, that even though. Hagam, write that down. The Hagam, even though. Shagam, that also. Yechida, this level of Yechida. He is. Nitsuts, a spark. Nivra, that's created. It's one of the five levels of your soul, so it is created. It is created. The call and all. Hey, there goes the five levels. Gam Yechida, even the level of Yechida. Shayechim are relevant, they're connected. How do you know that the Darius is the five, five? What? How do you know that it's five levels? Hey, it's, it's right. right. The call and all. Hey, five is yeah, five. Hey, five, yeah. All the five levels, <coughs> also Yechida, Shaykhim, are connected, or are relevant. La Nefesh, to the soul. Shemalu which is enclosed, Beguv, in a body. In other words, my Yechida is not the same thing as your Yechida. And your Yechida is not the same as his Yechida. So it's not pure Godliness is it? Because it's it's part of your your identity. It's it separate. Oba oven and in a way <coughs> the shame of a put a quote a put a uh, uh, how do you say punctuate this de of shame put two dots underneath the letter shin de shame of a shame of a name comma. Kamamar, like the saying, quote. What? Kamamar is what? Kamamar, like the saying, as the saying goes, like the saying, quote. Chamisha five. Shemot names. Nikra'u are called la, it, to the soul. The soul has five names, and Yechida is one of the names. So Yechida is a name. It's a thing. It's a divine thing. How can you say pure godliness? It's not so different, huh, from the other four. Wait, Five wait. names are called Le Anevish to the soul. What did it say? The number halo? La, it. Yeah. Her. If you want to. But it's talking about the soul. What does it mean, her? La Anevish to, to the soul. Shibagoof <coughs> in the body. If so, what are we saying here? The, the, the Yechida is part of the five levels of the soul. It's part of you. It's, it is, it's got a, com a comparison to the other. Why are you saying it's incomparable? Says the Rebbe, because I'll tell you why. Av al just one more line. Av al nevertheless, Yechida is totally different than the other four levels. Why? Hare, behold, <coughs> in Yana, the job, the job, or the definition, if you want to call it, the definition shall Yechida of Yechida, who is Ma what? Shehi Mekabelis, that it receives Mi Bechina from the level Yechid of Godliness that's called Yechid. 
What is this godliness called Yechid? We're going to do up to the period. The Kabbalah, it receives. Is that the same word to the uh, Kabbalah? Yes. It's the same word? What? Yeah, it accepts. Yeah, it accepts. It's the same. In English, it's also the same. We begin from the level of Yechid, this level of Yechid. What is this level of Yechid? Needs, so it's a spark. Nivra, creation, and there was a, a created spark. A created spark, she in Yano, whose purpose, whose job, who, huh? This in Yano, whose job, it can be translated a lot of different ways. Yeah. Whose job, who is, ma, that. You with me, Gabriel? So we are, you have it? Shabo in it. Mitlabesh is enclosed. Nitsuts, a spark. Bore of the Creator. It's something like the Holy of Holies in the base of English. And the Holy of Holies was totally different than any other room in the base of English. The Holy of Holies, if you went in there, a person went in there at the wrong time, or even the right person went in there at the right time, and he had a wrong thought, he would die. Immediately. On the spot. There's no other place in the Holy Temple like that. Right? There are places that the, there's a punishment of death to go in there. But it wasn't automatic. The Holy of Holies was like pure godliness was revealed there. It was like Mount Sinai. The Holy of Holies was the revelation of Mount Sinai. That's what was there. The revelation of Mount Sinai was there, in, just like in Mount Sinai, the people said, we can't take it, our souls are... That was no... It was a, the, Hashem himself was revealed. How did it happen? Who knows? Every Jew is the same thing. That's the level of Yechida. Every Jew, the Holy of Holies of every Jew, is this level of Yechida. There is a part of the person, just like the base of English was a part of the world, and their room, there was measurements to the room, and it was made of bricks, and it was, everything was just like normal. But in that place was revealed the essence of God. How can it be? It's impossible. It doesn't make any sense. But that's what it was. That's what every Jew is. That's the level of Yechid. And that's what Rabbi Shimon Bar Yechai was. Rabbi Shimon Bar Yechai was Yechida on two feet. A walking Yechid. It was like a walking a holy of holies. So tremendously high, so tremendously... This is like the base of Middash. You go, it's a big, big deal. Base of Middash. It's a building like every other building. What's the big thing? Oh yeah? Go into that room and let's see what you say afterwards. But before you go, write a letter of uh, you know farewell to your family. So what, do you, what do you mean? What do you mean? Uh, you'll see. Go ahead. You'll see. No, I'm not gonna go. Maybe I'll send my dog. In. Right? That's it. it just doesn't come out. Uh, I'm beginning to understand. Same thing, Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai. So Rabbi Shimon looks like a normal person, which just like everybody else. That's a big deal, right? So listen, Rabbi Shimon is not gonna kill you. He's not gonna make you like not like the holy of holies. And you could be, you'll never understand how holy he is. But if you have a person that's really, you have a person that you respect, sure, I respect Rabbi, uh, you know, Rabbi Yehuda. He's a great person, great prophet. I've been talking about it's infinitely better. Ask him who Rabbi Shem Bar Yochai is. <coughs> oh, that's a good idea. Go ask Rabbi Shem. Who's who this guy, Rabbi Shem? Don't say that, this guy, Rabbi Shem. Don't say Why? What's wrong? This guy's a mafia or something like that. Don't say that. You know how holy he is? You have any idea? You think he's that holy? Oh, oh this must be something. This is the Rebbe saying, Rebbe Shemar Raya, that was a totally different story than anything else. He was like the Yechida in your soul. It's pure godliness that's in every Jew. That's Rebbe Shemar Raya. As we'll learn more, God willing, tomorrow. Next week.